Hello everyone, my name is Palmy. Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for your dash Chino needs. And in this week's video, we're gonna switch it up a bit and look at postal techniques in Photoshop. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop this time and not Dad Studio. And today we're gonna to be looking at obviously post work. So we're gonna have a look at some post work. So I've got a nighttime scene here that I've done in Dad Studio. And so we're gonna go over some post work techniques to kind of show you how to do this. So I'm just gonna take this off. This is the uh, after image. So this image here is the exact image that came out of um, Dash Studio. So this is the exact image, the render as it was, nothing else added. So this is what it would look like. So when I start my post work in Photoshop, what I do first with the background is I make a copy and I create two copies. So I've got my first copy here of the background and I set the blend uh, mode to overlay for that one because I want the dark bits to be dark. And then the second one, I choose this screen here. I set another layer here and I set the blend mode to screen here. Now with this screen one, I can choose the brightness of, of the, of my image. So I can choose how bright I want it, which is the reason why I do overlay and screen. So overlay would choose obviously how dark I want the dark bits to be. And then I've got the brightness to kind of do the brightness, how much the screen, how much brightness I want the actual image. So I get to control the brightness, how much I want. Because sometimes when you get a render and it comes out, it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it. So with Photoshop or with any kind of image, with any kind of post work, we can choose the exact brightness and the darkness that we want in our image. So I'm gonna set that back to 18, I think it was. Okay, so I'm just going to put this, this is just another layer I've created here just to brighten up the image so we can see these lamps here. So normally what we do with lamps like this, we would, in Dash Studio, we would put a point light there. Uh, we would normally put a point light there and a point light here and then we would choose the color and then render. And then obviously you get the lovely lighting on the point lights bouncing off the wall here, probably some on the floor here and whatever else bouncing everywhere. When you render with point lights, it takes a very long time for the computer to make calculations and rendering times are increased significantly. So something that would possibly take 15, 20 minutes in a normal render perhaps with just to use your spotlights, like this is a spotlight here, right here, um, which just is to simulate the moon um, with the spotlights. Uh, when you do point lights, it just takes forever for the rendering to happen. Uh, so you could double, maybe triple the rendering times just because the point light takes ages to do. Um, so what we can do with post work is we can actually simulate what it would look like. It won't look exactly like that, but it'll give you, um, it's a good like cheat to kind of cheat your way, so to speak, to add that little effect thing. So we're going to put some lights here for the, the lamps here. So I've done that here. So I'm going to turn this off here, this layer. You can still see them here roughly. So. I've done it here already. I've got my group. I've got my layer, layer here, these two layers. So when I turn these on, you'll see, there you go. So this is something what you would see in an actual picture painting, perhaps it will look like that. So there you go. I'm going to do that now, show you how I did that. So I create a new layer here. I change the blend mode to color. And then I want to choose the color of my lights. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want that. I've got orange here, so I want my eyes to be orange, but I'm not going to choose bright orange. I want to choose slightly dark color because you'll see a reason why I want to choose slightly dark color. So a dark color here, something like that would do fine. I'm going to make that my foreground color and then I'm just going to paint it in. So just paint it in a bit there and paint it in a bit there. There we go. So my next layer I'm going to create here, new layer. I'm going to change that blend mode to color dodge. And then I'm going to fill that with black. So edit, fill, uh, black, uh, choose black from here. Okay, so that's all black now. And I want my foreground color to be white. So there's white. And I'm just going to go over it now. You're going to find, you're going to see that it's very, very bright. So you'll see that it's like ridiculously bright. I'm going to fix that in a bit. So there we go, ridiculously bright. So what we're going to do is use the fill 
and let's turn the fill down to something that I like so something like this maybe um, with the opacity it doesn't really work so if you see the opacity this is the reason why I didn't use opacity because for this case it doesn't work so we have to use the fill and we're going to do something like that that looks great to me so that's exactly what I did here with the lamp lights and just turn these off so that's exactly what I did here and what we can do now is do another layer which I've done here and what I've done here is change that to uh, linear dodge blend mode and the opacity is 18% so I'm going to turn that on I'm going to show you what it looks like there you go and that gives us a bit of a glow effect so that gives us a glow effect on the actual lamp so that's what I've done there and then up here at the top I've done lamp lights reflection so what I've done here is I've just added a bit more here on the side another layer and just same thing color um, blend mode so I've just put some here on the side here and some on the side here and then when I turn them on you'll see there we go we've got a little reflection on the wall um, so that's what you could do and obviously you can add some more here if you wanted to say the light might come down here a bit or maybe you know you wouldn't really see it on the bars because it's black there anyway so that may do for now so that's a pretty decent effect there so that's one way we can kind of cheat instead of adding point lights we can create our own lights um, create our own post work to do the lights to make it appear like they're lit using da studio but you know it's a great way method to do that okay so let's go further up here so what i've done here now is i've added the moon so this here is just a, a stock image that i did from pixels pixels.com and i just searched for moon and i brought the image in and then I placed it here and resized it because it's a huge image and I put it right over this here. So all this is here, this is just actual spotlight. This is the spotlight from Da Studio, that's all that is. Uh, it is an actual spotlight that I'm using, so the light coming from here is from this spotlight here. So it's kind of coming down here, down here and through here as well, you can see it. So when I turn this on, you'll see that there's our moon right there, nothing fantastic. At the moment, there's no like bright light coming from it, we're gonna fix that in a bit. So that's all I've done here. This is just the masking here, just to get rid of the kind of black um, blackness around here that came with the image. So just to remove the, that and just keep the actual moon there. So next one, we've got color dodge layer. So this layer here is like very similar to these uh, lamp lights layer here. I've just done the same thing. Um, so if I want to turn this on, you'll see a huge difference. There we go. So what I've done here is done the fill, reduce the fill, and my foreground color was white and I've gone over these bits here to really, you know, amplify the shiny bits here, the reflection of them, of the floor here, and this bit here, here, and even here. I've just literally gone everywhere, anywhere where there's kind of bright bits in my scene that I want to brighten even more, give that kind of shiny kind of thing, surface to it. Um, that's what I've gone through here. And I've even gone over the moon here, so you can see now. So when I turn it, we'll just have a look here. I'll turn it off and then turn it back on. You'll see the moon's bright now, as it would be if you're looking in the real sky it'd be slightly bright like that a bit exaggerated but that's what we're here to do exaggerate a bit so the next layer what i've done is just i've just done a, um, a copy of all the layers here so a copy of all the layers here and what i've done here is i've gone to filter so i've done i'm going to filter filter gallery you just turn this on sorry i'm going to filter filter gallery and i've chosen sorry forget that i've chosen plastic wrap with the default settings I clicked OK, I'm not going to do it now. And then all I've done here is I've just changed the fill to 40% with a blend mode soft light. So what that's done is given kind of like a 3D effect. So if you look here, the ridges, I don't know if you can see here. So actually if I turn it off, if you have a look at the brickwork here, and then when I turn it off, you'll see that it goes kind of flat. And then when I turn it on, it gives that kind of 3D effect um, to give you a bit more oomph to our scene. So that's what you could use plastic wrap layer. I didn't know we could use that. It's something I learned recently. So I thought that's kind of cool. So anything with like texture, you want anything that's texturing like brickwork, building work. Um, it really brings out the kind of 3D effect there. So that looks really cool actually. And who, who knew the plastic uh, wrap effect could do that? So there you go. And the next thing I like to use a lot in my post is, is the lookup tables. So the lookup tables are really cool. And the way you do that is you just go up here to the adjust here and it's this one here, lookup table. So I'm going to click on that. And then what you do here from the 3D uh, lookup tables, I've got loads here, but you can download these. These are all free. Some of them already come with Photoshop. You can literally go through 
and then it will change the way um, your postwork image looks. So these are preset like color colors that are already set there, so you can go through. And obviously the the opacity is really high, hundred percent. You could lower that. So I'm just showing you a few that we've got here. So you can get some really really cool effects here. So I'm just gonna just turn that off. So the one I've chosen here is I made it even more darker. Is this one here? Um, can't even say that hyper hyper's theme. So that's the one I've chosen here as my lookup table. And what he's done is actually decreased it. It's made it a bit more darker. So I've got more actual darker scene. So it looks more like nighttime really. So that's the reason why I had it there. And the last one we had is here is this scene here. So what I've done here, all I've done here is actually added some blur. So all I've done is made a copy of everything. So all these layers here, it's a, it's a layers of all these layers. And I've gone to, I've added a Gaussian blur. We can have a look how much, 10 here. And then I've just actually done a mask here and say, I want some blur around the moon. Uh, I want some blur around here. I want some blur here, on here, and this bit here, this bit here. So where the, sun, where the light's coming through, I want blur there as well. So that's all I've done. Um, because obviously if I don't have the mask, everything will be have the blurry haze and I didn't want the blurry haze and everything. So that's why that this is how the scene looks, the final scene. And I think that scene looks very good as a, a general environment scene. I know normally we work with uh, figures and everything, but I thought we'd do something different. We'd have a look at uh, scenes, how we can make our scenes look better. So this is what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is with this scene as well, uh, the PSD file, uh, I'll, the link will be in the description box for you to download all the files. So don't forget you can download and have a play and change bits and bobs and everything. Uh, so that will be available, link in the description box for all three files. And we're gonna have a look at another one. So this is our nighttime scene, and now we're gonna look at our daytime scene. Okay, so this is our daytime scene that I've done in Dash Studio. So all this is in Dash Studio, it's just a normal prop, that you can, a normal background environment that you can download. And I've got the actual, instead of, I've used sun sky to make the sun come uh, angle come from here, so it's kind of pointing straight down like this. And as you can see, there's a heavy use of contrast here. So we've got a dark contrast and a really, really bright scene here just to amplify the brightness. So I'm just gonna turn everything off. So that's what the scene looks like in Dash Studio. This is what it looks like. It's kind of plain compared to what it looks like now. So it's very, the colors are very muted and there's not much sunlight coming through. So this is why we use Pulsework to kind of make our scenes a lot better because there's only so much you can do in Dash Studio and you need to do the Pulsework to kind of really make your art look really cool and really stand out. So the first thing I did here again was overlay. So I've got my overlay, turned that on my background copy again and then I got my screen again and I've done opacity 35% this time because I wanted the brightness to be a bit brighter and what I've done here is I've got like sun ray effects so this is just a, a layer that we did before linear dodge so what we do is we add a, a new layer and we fill it in with black and then change the blend mode to linear dodge and you'll see what happens there we go and what I've done here is I've added some Gaussian blur. So just click OK. Gaussian blur. So that's the Gaussian blur I've chosen, 42%, pretty high. Um, so it really depends on what you're looking for. I did it pretty high because that's what I wanted. And the curves here. So this is something that's slightly different, something, a new technique that I've learned is we can actually choose the color of this uh, sun rays effect, really. So I've gone for blue here using the curves. Um, this was actually made using just a white. So we had white as my foreground color and then I just blurred it using Gaussian blur. And then I use curves to change the color. So what I want to show you is how you can change the color. So if, as you can see, what I've done here to make this light blue, I've gone to the red channel and I've turned it to half, brought it down straight down here to half. And I've gone to the green channel and turned it to less than half of that. So just there. And that's uh, giving me the blue color. Now say for example, if I wanted it to be an orangey kind of red color, orangey kind of color, what I would do in this case then is I would turn the red back up. I would get my blue to come down half there. And then I will get my green to come just above half. And there you can see it's gone um, orange color, I'll click okay. And there it is, 
there's orange. So that's a new technique you can use uh, using curves to, you know, specifically choose a color that you want of something uh, of the light rays in this case. So we'll stay with this uh, orange for now. It's not a problem. So again, here I've done the same thing, plastic wrap. Uh, layer, which is just a copy of all this. This is just a, uh, a copy of all that, and this is the final. It's just the layer layers of all these integrated, and we've got um, here the plastic wrap again. Same thing, uh, what we did in the previous one with the nighttime scene. So when I turn that back on, this is soft light. Um, you might not notice much difference because there's quite a lot of light here, which is blocking. But if you have a look, say for example here on the wall. When I turn it off, it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle, but it is there. I mean, I could turn that up maybe a bit more. There we go, something around about 30%. And there you can see, so we're getting a bit too much here actually, which is why I turned it down. So that will probably, we'll probably go to 20, maybe 25, because I didn't want too much here. We're still getting it, but there you go. So that's something we can use to bring out the definition, the detail of all this um, architecture here. So here we go. This is another one merged. It's a merged copy of all the layers below. So I turn this on. So this is overlay. And what this is, this is using lens flare. So what I've done here to get the lens flare is I've just gone to filter, go to render and then lens flare. And then you can choose, which is really cool. You can choose where you want it, the lens flare to be. And then you can choose these different effects, which is really cool. So we can choose these effects. Click OK, and there you go. Got my lens flare there. And I've done another lens flare here. So this is just a copy, uh, uh, a duplicate layer of this. Turn it on, and there you go. So what I've done here as well is I've changed the actual RGB uh, curves values. So if we go to image curves, I don't think it will show, but we can try. Image adjustments curves. No, it's not going to show because it's not a smart layer. But that's what I did there. Same thing I did here with the sunrise effect. I've changed the curves to um, red, uh, orangey color, so that's why it looks like that. Now, something here we can do a really cool effect is this gradient layer. So the top bit is uh, foreground color is blue, background uh, background color is red, and I just use a gradient tool to make this gradient layer. And we use overlay as our blend mode. And when I turn it on, you get something really cool like this. So this is a really cool effect that I thought um, is really cool as well. So you can see the kind of differentiation of, you got the kind of blue here and then you got the red bit at the top. It's a, quite a cool effect. So maybe something you could look into. So that's our, our daytime scene done. It's a very cool. So again, this will be uh, available for you to download as well. So don't forget to link that uh, in the description box so make sure you check out the description box and you can download these and use them in photoshop or anything that uh, allow any program that allows uh, psd files and you can have a play around through with these and use some of these effects in your uh, in your artwork and we've got one more final scene a little bonus scene that i want to show you so thank you for sticking around and i'm going to go through another final scene with you so here we are our final post work image here and the reason why i'm showing this image here is because this technique here is because sometimes in Dash Studio, we won't be able to find the right environment or the background um, to put into Dash Studio, or there might not be one available to purchase that has your specific requirements that you want to have. So in that case, we're going to have to use composition to find a background from a stock image, like this is at the background, this is a stock image, and then put our character in that stock image and then obviously blend them together to make them look like they're as one. They're actually a part of that image. So that's the reason why I'm showing this. This uh, is my first attempt at doing it. So I'm just gonna show you what I've learned and maybe you can take the skills from here and apply them to your images as well. So this is what that final image is gonna look like. So I'm just gonna just get to go back to our beginning. So this is our stock image here. It's a black and white image that I got from pexels.com I think. Um, I think they just typed in mansion and then this was one of the images that came up. So this is our image there. And then what I've done is done a duplicate layer of the background and I've just added some Gaussian blurs. So that's what I've done there of 10 pixels, Gaussian, a radius of 10 pixels, Gaussian blur. And so that gives us like a glow effect 
So you can see things are starting to glow now, which is a really, really easy way to do like a glow effect if you need to do. And then I've just done another, another duplicate um, copy of that layer, one below. And I've just added from the filter gallery, I've added a dry brush, oops, gone a bit too far, dry brush there, and I've added plastic wrap. And that's what it looks like. So go back. And that's what it looks like. Obviously, you won't see these effects while, when, when we do the other effects. So that's why I've left them pretty high. 100% um, actually I've them, left them there. And then I've used a color lookup, uh, one of our LUTs uh, lookup tables to make it with a linear burn blend mode. Uh, and this one is called Fusion 88, the one I've done as a LUT file, my 3D LUT file. So what I wanted here was I just wanted everything to be black and I wanted these areas where the light's coming through to be very, very bright and these very bright here. That's why I chose that one there. So now when we add our character, this is what it looks like. And obviously the character is not very well blended in. So I'm just going to turn my character off for a minute and I just want to, I'll leave the character for now. I just want to go through the rest. So here we've got um, our light rays layers. So if I click on that, you'll see this is very similar to what we did in the daytime one where we've got our lights coming through here and I've done my Gaussian blur to give you a bit of a glow effect. You can see the Gaussian blur is pretty high. And I've got curves here. So if I double click on my curves, you can see blue's half and then green's gone to half, less than half of that. And that's giving me the red, um, the sorry, the orange glow here. So all I've done there is duplicated it. So I've got the same layer. Sorry, this is a linear dodge uh, uh, blend burn as well. So uh, blend mode used. And I've just done the same here for the second one, which is the other side here. So all I've done is just made a duplicate layer of this and I've just re rotate, uh, reverse the image, uh, flip the image and just moved it across to the right. So that's all I've done there. And the next one we've got is a uh, layer is our color dodge uh, with fill. And this is what the color dodge does with the fill. So I've just wanted this to be more brighter really. So I've just gone over it and made that really bright with our color dodge. And remember with the color dodge, you need to do um, edit fill with black and then you go over it with a white paintbrush or a white brush and that will give you the effect there. And this layer here is uh, an actual merge layer, visible merge layer that leaves a new layer. So let's check out that. And then this is what this does. It gives the, I've done the Gaussian blur again, 50. And I've also changed the uh, light to be blue. So I've gone before that. I've done image, uh, image. I've done image adjustments, curves, and I, I made the light blue. And the way we do that is we bring the red all the way down. We bring the green down like this, and then it will make the light blue. So that's what I've done there. And then Gaussian blur to give it a bit of a blur effect. And then I've used another lookup table again, a LUT file. And the one I've used here is Hackmanite. And it's giving me this really, really cool kind of orange light coming through the sunlight, really cool sunlight lay, uh, rays coming through here uh, with a full, the uh, actual full fill. I haven't actually turned the opacity down at all in normal blend mode. So that's our background done. So now we need to get our character in there. So if I go back down, so I'll put my character on, visible layer. You can see that there's my character and she's not very well blended into the actual image. So what we need to do is we need to blend our character into here. So the colors are off, the lighting's off and everything's off. So we need to make it more blended. So the way we do that is a great technique I've learned recently as well is this one here is we create a new layer uh, and we just fill it in with red. And then what we do, we turn that on and then we set our uh, blend mode to hue. So I'm setting hue. And what you'll see is it's all red here. So what we need to do is match the color of our um, character, of our character to this kind of color here. So I've done that here with this layer. I'm going to create a hue saturation here. 
So I'm going to turn it on. And as you can see, it's quite muted here. It needs to be a bit more red. So if we go to our hue saturation, yeah, the saturation is quite low. So I want to probably turn it up a bit more. Let's have a look. So we're trying to match the color here, roughly to what this looks like here, the color here. So that's probably a bit too much, something like that maybe. Okay. And so we can turn that off here and see what that looks like. Okay. So we've got a bit more color here now like this. So what we also need to do now is check the saturation. So again, we turn this layer on, we turn the blend mode from hue to saturation. And this is where it gets a bit trippy. So you can see all the colors here. And we want to try and match these colors here. And the way we do that is we use our curves here. So I'm going to turn my curves on. And I'm going to go to curves here. So you can see my curves layer here. And as you can see, it's not matching up exactly with this. So what I need to do is choose my red channel here. I'm going to choose this. Click on my pointer here. I'm going to click on my character. Click on my character here. And I'm going to use my arrow keys, up and down arrow keys to try and get the color for the red channel to look like this. So let's have a look. That's probably too much. It's going green there. So maybe it's round right about there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my blue, green channel. So green channel there. I'm going to uh, click on my character. And then use up and down arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of get that color. And there we go, getting a bit more red. That's what I want. That's actually magenta now. So let's go the other way. That's too green. So we're probably looking around about there. Okay. And we're going to go do the same thing with the blue channel. So blue channel here, click on my character. So remember, we're trying to get this kind of red color here. This kind of red color here. So that's turning a bit too blue now. Come down a bit. That's going to yellow now, so I need to go up. And it's probably around about there, more or less. Okay, so I'll go back up and I turn this layer off. See how that looks. And that actually doesn't look too bad, I think. I think that looks pretty good. So another thing we need to look at is our levels. So let's go down. It's probably a bit too bright because obviously when you have a bright light coming through the back like that, your actual character here would be a bit darker because the sunlight's coming through and blocking it. Uh, like a silhouette almost. So you're trying to get silhouettes. So I'm going to get my levels here and turn it on. And that's probably a bit too dark. So with the levels, we have to play around with our levels. So let's have a look. I want it a bit darker. So probably something like that may do. Just having a look. It may be a case you need to go back into the hue saturation and the curves to sort it out. So I'll leave that for now, but you can play around with this. Remember this file uh, will be available to download as well. So you can play around with the settings. Um, obviously this character won't be in there, but you can put your own character in there and then play around with the settings and try and use the uh, this technique to kind of get the coloring, the color grading correct. So that's it. Uh, obviously, I would have spent a bit more time doing this, but not for this tutorial. So that's a great way to match the color up with your uh, character. And last thing I'm going to do is our effect here that we did for the daytime pulse work that we did. So the same thing here, gradient tool, and we did overlay with the fill. I'm turning on, and we get this really cool effect. So there we go. I've just gone through three different ways there. Uh, Pulse work one, which is our nighttime one. We've got our daytime one, and then we've got one to do with composition. If we can't find a background in our studio, then we'd 
uh, we have to use other methods to create our artwork. Right, so there we have it, some excellent postwork techniques there for you to get stuck into, covering three different scenarios. Scenario number one, the daytime scene. Scenario number two, the nighttime scene. And scenario number three, when you just can't find that background in that studio, get a stock image, smash it all together in Photoshop, and there you go. And in next week's video, we'll be looking at light presets because I got a message from one of my subscribers saying, hey, can you do a light presets video? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So we're gonna do a light presets video next week. And while you're waiting for that video, check out these videos here, hit that subscribe button there, Give this video a thumbs up if you like the video and leave a comment down below and i do read the comments and i reply as soon as i can so make sure you leave a comment down below and i'll see you in next week's video and i'll see you in that video